won the toss, wet to bat, bright sunny afternoon, small crowd in so far, come down this afternoon after work. Hello to everybody throughout Australia, the start of the Bench Hedges World Series for 92-93. In for Greg Barry, sent back by Simmons, Esmond Haynes. Yes, if he pitches it right, it's going to be difficult to handle because he's of goodish pace very strong young man excellent record it's only 21 years of age he's got an average of 18.38 his best figure 626 he's played 48 one day internationals tremendous record takes a wicket every 26 balls so he's lethal early on he'll test the top order of the West Indies today very good over, the big shout, he's out, yes, beautiful bowling, caught by the wicketkeeper, Rashi took the straightforward catch, and that's one for one. A beautiful line there, Wacko Eunice, as Haynes looking at the pad there, the ball went away, seemed to be back to me. Wicketkeeper took it, cleanly enough, fine piece of bowling, the West Indies in trouble early on, one for one. Richardson, John Simmons, because Desmond Haynes has been a judge caught behind. It's well bowled, my word, they're in good form, these two bowls. A left and right-handed combination, right at the stumps, movement in the air. Desmond Haynes just paused for a second, and shook his head and then walked off. Well, that's well struck. Phil Simmons did his best, the half bowl, he comes straight down the ground for four. Beautiful shot. Well, he may be a great bowler, but uh, this chap Simmons is going to get stuck in as well. Actually, hit that on the up as well. It wasn't a half volley. Cool shot. That's beautifully played by Richardson against genuine pace. Hit it straight to ground. Didn't quite time it. It's a long boundary down there. They've run three. They should look for four. Simmons coming back. It's going to be in a bit of trouble. The throws short. Good running, and a good shot. Good reply to genuine pace. The pull shot, short enough. He was back quickly. Richardson, he hit it well into the ground. Yes, lovely shot this by Richardson. Didn't have much time to uh, to move. He just saw it short, and uh, straight away he just leant back there and wafted that one away. It's, uh, it's a pretty slow start by his standards. He's normally a runner ball. Gone! Yes, well caught. Good bowling. Wasn't that good with the angle there. Phil Simmons went for the slash. Square slash. Rashid and it took the catch. And Pakistan on top. Now there it goes, flying away very wide. And a good uh, dive there. Very good catch. So, um, Pakistan off to a tremendous start here. They really have uh, got things going. They've uh, got rid of Simmons, they've got rid of Haynes. And uh, it's 2 for 12. Two for 12 as Brian Lara takes guard. They're possibly seeing the best bowling combination in the world. 
the new ball was a Macram, Maca Eunice. Both very fast, both got a lot of ability. Young. Now Tess Brian Lara under these conditions. No ball called by umpire Len King. Yes, there's no doubt they get my attention, I'll tell you that. Um, they are brilliant bowlers. Not only are they quick, they swing the ball as well. And uh, this is the dismissal. Have a look at him go after this one. Way outside off stump. Well, the West Indies do play that shot. Michael Whitney took seven wickets here in a test match. The ball angling across the right hand as they like to hit the ball square on the offside. There it goes. That's a great shot. Super. Well, I think he's realised that uh, he's got to cut loose here somehow. And he's gone for it. Absolutely smashed that one through the offside gap. And uh, that really loosens him up a little bit. Richardson now moves on to 11. So uh, that's really good news from the West Indies point of view. They needed to do something. Now they were getting bogged down a little bit. Raymond, the new young fast bowling hope for Pakistani cricket coming on as the first change bowler behind Wasim Akram. Another in the, the long line of pace bowlers whom uh, Imran Khan has discovered and encouraged. Low scoring overs and runs have been hard to come by. West Indies are under some pressure here to conserve wickets as well as score runs. Two of their better players are already back in the pavilion, so Brian Lara and Richie Richardson have a great deal of responsibility here to make sure that they can bat through these early overs, try and establish a partnership and build a total which uh, they can uh, defend this evening. It's runs there. Generally don't have to run for those. It's beautifully placed and very well timed. Something which we've come to expect from Brian Lara. Very talented young left-hander. Another over pitch delivery. Not, we haven't seen too many of these, but Brian Lara quick to seize the opportunity. Beautifully driven through the offside. No need wasting energy chasing those. Be some leg buys here. A bit of swing again down the leg side. May have hit Brian Lara's hip pad. Could be three here because uh, was a Macron and was misfielded, but. Not many around, and Richie Richardson is one, it's buys, so it hasn't made contact with the batsman. Umpire Rashid, uh, sorry, wicketkeeper Rashid, unable to get the glove on it, or to handle it. Well, it passed very close to Brian Lara there. I think wicketkeeper Rashid would be very unhappy with the fact that it was signaled as a buy. That one has definitely ducked down the leg side again. I don't believe it has made contact with the, the batsman's leg. It was a bit of swing and then a bit of late movement from the pitch. It's buys once more. So it's a pretty good over there. Nine runs, in fact. Two for 33. Amir is a left arm orthodox bowler from the river end. He hasn't had a great deal of success. Lara moving a long way across his stumps, working that ball away to backward square leg, just the one run. So Brian Lara finding it pretty difficult. He's on six, which includes a boundary four. So Brian Lara finally gets one away. Won't go all the way. Maybe at least two runs. Lara wants to come back and make it three. So four runs from that over. The West Indies sliding along slowly at two for 41. Found a gap on the offside this time, over-pitched. He's a very good player from the point of view of being able to put away the bad ball. Brian Lara has struggled with his timing so far this morning, but whenever he gets a, a bad ball, he manages to put them away. Oh. 
and that'll be four. Still very fast. This outfield earlier in the season there was a lot of sand on it apparently and it was a bit slow. Ramiz Raja on this occasion was the one who was slow. Ramiz was very lucky it went for four otherwise they might have run five. Just got his hands to it. Now he's got to chase it. He'll be thinking to himself that uh, could be in real trouble if it slows down. Could be in real trouble when he catches the captain's eye as well. It's uh, pretty difficult hitting the ball into the breeze. Caught straight to Wazi Macram at backward point. And Richie Richardson will be most disappointed about that. It was a long hop. It was the right shot. The execution was uh, just lacking a little. A very soft dismissal, that one. Hasn't timed the ball perfectly at any stage of his innings. That one actually turned a fraction, but went straight to the man. Not a difficult catch, but uh, an extremely good one from the Pakistan point of view. Richie Richardson, 23, three for 64. Carl Hooper. Not a great uh, career average in one-day games, but a very good strike rate. 71.6 runs per 100 balls. That's a good shot, but uh, straight to point. And it was that uh, backward point position that brought about... Uh, Richie Richardson's downfall in the last over. In fact, uh, rather a strange looking dismissal on the replay from that angle because uh, it looked as though he hit down on the ball. So Hale over the wicket to the left-handed Brian Lara cuts late, that should go all the way down the hill. Sweet timer of the ball and good placement. Brian Lara, probably the key now with Carl Hooper. The last of the recognised batsmen. And they need a big stand here. Pakistan still on top. Conditions are perfect for batting. This is a fine shot. This is a great example of the batsman letting the ball come to him, using the pace, even though it's only a slow bowler. And this ball has fairly raced across the outfield. Very quick outfield, too, at the way. Yeah. The flex finally glance. Was the Macman, the fieldsman, they won't take him on. Good arm, good athlete. Good piece of cricket there, nice shot, good fielding. The throw a little bit short, but contain the batsman just to a single. This match is well poised. Uh, one feels that Brian Lara is an excellent touch, but needs to go on. Yes, Wazi Makram here, very quickly onto the ball, using just the one hand to pick it up, throwing on the run. That's the sort of fielding that one day cricket, where it brings the best out of the fielders, puts the pressure on them. Handy cricketer, he can bowl and a very good batsman. That beat slip, he was going the wrong way. Carl Hooper just waiting for the last minute for the late cut. Beautifully played. It's a lovely little shot, this. You, you don't often see the late cut played nowadays in, in any form of cricket. Both these batsmen now have played it beautifully. Carl Hooper just laying back, spots the gap. Slip was very wide there for the left arm spinner. And again, this quick outfield means this ball is going to race away for four. Sweet timing, superb placement. It's a good shot, but it won't beat it off. If he gets it, he's out. He's missed it. Couldn't have missed by much. My word, that was a risky single by Carl Hooper. That's what he does. He breaks concentration and almost threw his innings away. Hooper hit this ball firmly and straight to uh, Amasa Hale at mid-off and still decided that there was a run in it. This would have been run out by a distance. In the process, actually, Amasa Hale has damaged himself looks like he might have pulled something in his groin which is not much fun well that's a blow for Pakistan because he's one of the main top order batsmen as well as doing a fine job with the ball he's going to go off so he must <laughs> think it's reasonably serious at this stage of the tour to pull a muscle would have thought after bowling he'd have been loosened up strangely. He was at mid-off position. He gathered the ball nicely. He threw it. He just uh, maybe twisted himself. Had a real chance for a run out. 
It's again another young man who very early in his career seems to have notched up an awful lot of one-day matches. It's quite a lot of experience crammed into a relatively short space of time. Cooper on strike. It's going to be close for hit shortly. He throws. Oh. Brings up the 100. Mustak not behind the stumps there. A bit out of position. And the keeper had a shy as he should have at the unprotected stumps at the bowler's end. You can see Rashid Latif very quickly away from behind the stumps. Oh. Throws off balance. This time Carl Hooper probably just making his ground. But it definitely needed the ball to hit the stumps if there was a chance for Renault. Good running. Just taking advantage there, but also very good feeling from the wicketkeeper. And uh, Asif Mushtaba is the man about to take over from Atua Rahman. The oh. orthodox spinners and Carl Hooper just waits for it to come again. He's playing those late cuts beautifully, letting the ball run off the face of the bat, the pace of the ground, the pace of the wicket going all the way for four. This wacker outfield, it's been designed so that the outfield slopes down away from the wicket area. Uh, again, just uh, the pace of the ball being used perfectly by the West Indies batsman. Hooper just opens the face. Carl Hooper goes in the air and Phil Simmons can wander off with him because Carl Hooper has done it again. He's got a start and has failed to go on with it. There's a few comments around the place that Phil Simmons wouldn't have to be out there for long and they've been proven correct as Carl Hooper hits it straight to it wide mid off comfortably caught there by Wazim Akram Carl Hooper driving in the air not really in full control he goes West Indies lose their fourth wicket four for one 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 nine West Indies Keith Arthurton is the new Batsman for the West Indies, left-hander. Performed so well on the Brisbane Test match. First innings he performed well. Age 27, 76 not out, his highest score in limited over matches. 43 of those games he has played as a career average of 29.26. Two left-handers at the crease now, Arthurton and Brian Lara. And Arthurton is there because of what happened to Carl Hooper. Not too sure why Hooper hit that one in the air. He seemed to get, get to the pitch of the ball. Drove through the line, what went in the air. Brian Lara finds the gap this time, brings up his 50 with that boundary to the square leg fence. Just acknowledges the very light applause from the crowd here, which is building quite steadily. Brian Lara is the batsman on strike, again sweeping. Just a little glide this time, very fine sweep. There's a Macram. Jung as the uh, fieldsman down there at fine leg. Arthurton is on three and on strike. Lara has moved along to 58. There are 17 extras, four for 132. Getting down to the business end of the innings now and Keith Arthurton picks the gap. A beautifully timed shot. Arthurton is a good player of spin, especially of the orthodox variety. He usually uses his feet quite well. On this occasion, chipping, getting to the pitch, driving beautifully through the offside. Around the 2.30, 2.40 mark, Brian Lara will need to stay there for a while. Another one in the air, and uh, he won't stay there very long at all. That was a wide wrong in which Mushtaq has bowled quite consistently to the left-handers. Pretty poorly picked, I would say, from Brian Lara. So the end of a good innings of 59 for him. The West Indies lose their fifth wicket. The wrong one here again to Brian Lara. He has bowled them consistently to the left-handers. Pitching just outside off stump and spinning away. Brian Lara just managing to hit that on the bottom of the bat. No control at all. Very simple catch. And Brian Lara goes. 5 for 138 the West Indies.
just a bit more. That's one leg. There's five to come. Junior Murray is the new batsman. He's the wicket keeper in this lineup for the West Indies. Right hand batsman, 24 years of age. Shouts of catch it, and that's exactly what uh, Rashid has done. A very good catch. He's uh, taken a couple of good diving catches. One to get rid of Phil Simmons, and now this one to get rid of Keith Arthurton. He's a good keeper, Rashid Latif. I saw him in England last year, and he's a good batter as well. Very alert, good reflexes. That ball went a long way, and he took it nicely in both gloves. Good effort, a wicket to Wazi Makram, a great catch to Rashid Latif. And for the West Indies, six for 140 in 37. Ian Bishop strides to the crease. He came into the Pakistan side after uh, Mohan Khan had an indifferent match at Headingley in the test match this last English summer. Junior Murray has got that away and it's going even faster as it gets out towards the boundary. Just a little downslope there. Long chase here for Mustaba and he won't get there. That is very, very quick, that outfield. Mustak uh, suggesting there to the bowler that it wasn't his fault entirely that he missed that one. Saying that it kicked up and nearly took his nose off. He's partly right. But was he? I'm not going to pay too much attention to that. of catch it he has and Ian Bishop uh, has walked didn't even wait for umpire King to give him so another good effort there by the wicket keeper diving forward and across he's been very impressive Rashid so to the bowler it's a beautiful delivery it cuts away a good catch again very impressive to, be able to uh, sit here and watch this fellow bowl and Rashid Latif keep wickets. Out for six, Ian Bishop, seven for 153 and 41. Curtly Ambrose comes in wearing the white cricketing hat. Substitute fielder. Oh, and uh, Latif almost went too far there. He, he got in the way of uh, Inzam arm at first slip. I think he might have uh, perhaps overdone it a little bit, but you uh, should never go crook at a keeper for trying too hard. I think it might have uh, struck in some arm in the chest, or certainly in the hands in front of his chest, if um, Rashid Latif hadn't got across there, but he made an enormous amount of ground. Oh, that was quick. He tried to pull it. He was about a half a second late, and he's paid the penalty. What a penalty to pay. And uh, Junior Murray just forcing a grin out. It was almost uh, as though he was anticipating a slightly shorter delivery. But it was through him before he got the bat down. Wasn't really the ball to be pulling at this stage. And uh, any delivery from Waka Yunus that strikes an unprotected part of the body he's gonna hurt you have a mean dead give me some assistance there Jarvid going out to short cover for junior Murray Mucky Yunus with the breeze coming across from mid off to fine leg knocks him over superb spell of bowling Straight at off stump. That's the end of the junior for 22. That's eight for 176. Absolutely perfect line from Waka Yunis. 
good pace. This ball just drifts in a little bit to Junior Murray. Whether he was still feeling the pain from the previous delivery or not, we never know. But this ball cuts back very sharply just toward, just at the end of its delivery there. No real chance for Junior Murray. Another West Indies wicket falls. Waka Yunis takes his second of the innings. And it's now eight for 176. Henderson Cummings makes his way to the pitch. Eight for 176. It's working out, Junior Murray. First a short pitch delivery. And he knocks him over with pace and in swing. It's that late swing that really undoes Junior Murray here. And there's many a batsman in the world who'd have failed to keep that one out. That's in the air, it's gone. Four for Wazamakram. They're really crumbling like a pack of cards, the West Indies, due to the genuine pace and spin. Great effort. Well, Anderson Cummins uh, hardly getting hold of this ball at all, lobbing a very gentle catch to Jarvid Meandad at short mid wicket. Cummins, like uh, many lower order West Indies batsmen, likes to think he can bat. But he's going to have to wait till another day to prove it to us. West Indies now nine for 177. Superb bowling from Wazam Akram, Waka Yunus, and Young Mustak, the weak spinner. Of course, the man comes in at the end of the innings. He knows they need runs. It's a good start. That may beat cover and go all the way. Running down the hill, lightning fast outfield, four runs. Kenneth Benjamin away to a good start. Kenneth Benjamin. in one day international cricket getting the standard late innings delivery from Wazi Makram the Yorker made it into a full toss and timed it rather nicely actually and it's beaten the field and uh, although Atura Rahman takes chase after it that's one race he's not going to win through the fine bowling and good fielding in the Pakistanis Kelly Ambrose gets an edge, that'll go all the way for four. One bounce, two bounces, three bounces into the gutter. And that's good hitting by the big left-handed batsman. Well, Waka Yunis also coming in for some stick now from Kirtley Ambrose. Well, oh, they're going to bet out there 50 overs. That's a very, very important thing to do. That's well saved, just the two runs. So a good effort by the 10 and 11 to bat out the 50 overs. <laughs> Kenneth Benjamin, Benjamin loving every moment of this at the tail end of the West Indies innings. He's on 12, Ambrose 15. And he's got back to that as well, the Yorker. So after 50 overs, the West Indies are 9 for 197. Pakistan 198 for victory. And through the fine going position, just a single. Ambrose cleans up at third man. Bishop generating some pace here. He's a fine young bowler. He'll give Kirtley Ambrose great support. He's um, finding some form, this young man. He really looks to me to be in good rhythm and looks confident. One or two long spells in the test match at the Gabba. Beautiful run well forward. That's straight to the point man that's a great breakthrough it was low and fast Desmond Haynes takes the catch that's just what the West Indians needed Desmond Haynes just uh, believing that he may have been a little bit lucky to, to catch that one it, it went fairly quickly and to just to his right hand Desmond got himself into a bit of a, an awkward position and finished up nearly uh, dropping the ball suggesting the Sun may have been in his eyes there Keith Arthurton was pretty happy. Brian Lara delighted. 
the gully fieldsman has worked for uh, the West Indies. Pakistan, one for six. That's one. There's one to come. Simon Mike takes guard. Wonderful strike rate there, 85, an average of 32. 163 matches, he's on strike to Bishop, who's really coming in now from the river, river end. Almost gets through, a very good over. Over. One for six, a great start by the West Indian pace attack. 197, it's a long way away now. If he was one or two early on, it really does put pressure on the middle order. This is what happened. So Hale driving at a, a ball that was on the rise. Desmond Haynes put off by the sunlight there, but takes the catch. A good catch it was because it flew fairly fast and low to his right hand. Haynes hangs onto it, and uh, much to the delight of Ian Bishop and his West Indian teammates, that wicket's a pretty good uh, breakthrough. One, four, six. This one hit very firmly back past the outstretched left hand of Anderson Cummins. It's got a run away down towards the fence. And uh, Ian Bishop, not the first man to find that uh, this is a very quick outfield. Gave good, ch good chase, but unable to cut it off. And a welcome boundary for Pakistan. It's a very sensible method they've used uh, in the levelling and top dressing of this ground. It is slightly lower when you get within, say, 10, 15 yards of the fence, and the ball actually gathers speed. Tidy game in Hobart, but he's done absolutely nothing wrong out there today. Josh. And that's more like Sally Malik we know. That's timing. It's a beautiful straight drive down the ground, just relieving some of that tension. It's the end of the over. Pakistan at one for 34. Pretty well hit. It was in the air, but uh, it was off the middle. Sound. Four more runs to Pakistan. Uh, that was ambitious. And a bit foolish one might add. I don't think there's any reason for Sally Malik to be playing shots like that or attempting shots like that. Pakistan have only lost one wicket so far, and they are certainly not far behind the scoring rate required. Ambitious and not all that bright. And taken by Junior Murray, diving away to his right. Not quite uh, as wide as a couple of the catches that uh, Rashid like probably keeping under lights for the first time. A first in many respects for Julian Murray. His first one day game for the West Indies. First time on the lights, not a bad catch. Benjamin strikes for the West Indies. Pakistan. Me and Dad a tremendous record in international cricket. He'd been very tidy today, in contrast with uh, his effort in Hobart, but that is fine catch. It's also a feature of the West Indies innings, keeping of Rashid Latif. A good catch from behind the stumps again there, and uh, Junior Murray flying to take that ball, and he's delighted. No wonder, it's the sort of breakthrough that West Indies are actually getting quite desperate for. run there that's a very good example of how fast that ball goes as it gets close to the boundary Arthur and had the pace just to be able to get a foot to it looks like they play football on Nevis too a useful boot on that from uh, Keith Arthurton well struck shot too from Sally Malik well placed through extra cover there's a big gap out there and Arthurton had to cover a lot of ground to cut that ball off And Cummins, the misfielder. Oh, 
off the pad or thigh pad and uh, an extra one for the fumble. Ambrose at long off and that brings up the 100 for Pakistan in the 31st over. Miss Jarvett's the sort of player that you uh, also express the sentiments that he's a so-and-so to play against but you'd love to have him on your side. balls to get off the mark tonight but 14 runs now in 35 balls career strike rate a bit higher than that one that you see there yeah, oh what a good catch if he's edged it and uh, umpire Evans obviously thought he had because he queried his partner Len King to see if he got it before it hit the ground and that is an excellent catch we've seen some terrific work tonight uh, or this afternoon and tonight from the keepers and that's probably the best effort of the day junior murray's had a pretty good uh, game so far with the gloves tonight looks so good down in hobart but he's taken a couple of brilliant catches and there'll not be many better catches than that one this summer uh, as we go into a drinks break pakistan uh three for 102. Inzamam Al Haq is the man at the crease. Yeah. Simmons again. Oh, come Horrible on. throw. And it's uh, going to get them just the one extra because uh, Javid went quite a way through in the taking the first run. Phil Simmons, the fielder, at backward point. Tries to throw the ball too hard, off balance. Pulls it wide, and there wasn't really a lot of support behind. Well, that's a pretty useful shot. It was a no ball, but I don't think that made any difference to the shot. Should run for. Ball going right to that uh, long boundary. Good cricket there by the Pakistanis. Uh, Mal Huck taking a bit of a risk, hitting the ball over mid-wicket and then some very good running and Javid and Dad, one of the older members of the cricket fraternity these days but he still gets between the wickets even though he's struggling with back problems. 3 for 114 Pakistan after 34. Once again Javid getting bat on ball. That was, that was a bit risky with the foot. And Benjamin gets away with it. In the commentary box now, David Gower and Michael Holding. Well, he's pulled it this time. And in fact, proving just how difficult it is to play that shot from the ball of that length. Not quite getting hold of it. Aiming it high over the infield into the big gaps in the... Only picking up two for it. Just the 28 runs from his bowling so far. At least 29 now, if not 30. Again, this outfield's so quick that Phil Simmons there gets the ball five yards in front, in from the fence. Good throw this time from Simmons. He's going to have to chase to catch that one again. Beautifully timed this time by Enzimam al -Huck. Four very useful runs. It's turning out to be an expensive over from Carl Hooper. Just the batsman, Carl Hooper and Phil Simmons involved in this game at the moment. Simmons not really bothering to chase this much. It's over the top. That's very well struck indeed by al -Huck. 
no effort at all, just pure timing. It's cleared Richard Richardson. It's the 50 partnership. It's 150 for Pakistan. Very good shot that by Intermanul Haq. Just shuffled across to his off stump. Ball directed towards mid stump and just lifting it over the infield there. Over Richie Richardson. Down to the boundary for four. There he goes over to the offside, lifting it over mid on. Good shot. And Jarvin Meehan Dad appreciating that. Congratulating, clapping the batsman there. That could race away too. It'll be a test for Ian Bishop. Gets a good boot on it. Peaceful fielding there. Not orthodox, but they do play with a football in the Caribbean. And saving two precious runs there at third man. Not bad footwork there by Ian Bishop. It would have been very difficult for him to race around and bend down with his hands and stop that one. Just the orthodox right arm spin. That's it! And a brilliant catch. Inzaman Mohak is out. It's Brian Lara just behind Square Lake there. Who has pulled off, pulled off another fantastic catch. The feeling in this game has been of a very high quality. Already today there have been several very good catches. And this time it's Paul Hack who is dismissed from the bowling of Hooper. West Indies certainly need to, to take some wickets. Paul Hack, they are not really getting hold of that shot. Brian Lara. Knocking it up and then finding a grasp it on his chest. Pakistan lose their fourth wicket, four for one, fifty seven. The man to replace Inzaman Haq will be Asif Mushtaba. Away. Young left handed batsman. Just a touch more. The highest score of That's 60 not out in one day internationals. Only an average of 18.88. He's a more talented player than that. Relatively new to the international game, but played very well in England early in the year. And this is the dismissal. Well, Huck not quite getting hold of the ball as he hoped, but Brian Lara doing very well indeed to palm the ball up and catch the rebound. <laughs> Must have already very ambitious. His first ball from Carl Hooper now around the wicket. Very fluent stroke player as he pushed to it. But again, Brian Lara, very good. This time fielding it just behind point on the offside for the left hand. It's the same position as he was for Inzamar Mulhak. Good juggling catch. Brian Lara certainly in the thick of things at the moment. Pakistan are now four for 157. One six required. Two quick wickets would make it difficult for the new batsman to the crease. It's well placed, nicely timed by Asif. Happy with two. Five runs off the over. Four for one six two. It's a little bit of pressure on this young man to put bat to ball. Catch it's a cry. Throw is oh, there. It's out. Good cricket under pressure. Yes, well done by Carl Hooper. Back behind the stumps, the bail off in the flash. That's a vital run out. Brian Lara in the action once again. Very good thinking by Brian Lara. The ball was hit. They went for the quick single. A lot of fielders would have picked it up and gone for the wicketkeeper's end, but Mustaba was on the back foot. Had to run to the uh, bowler's end. Brian Lara sensed that. He was the one under pressure. Carl Hooper very quickly behind the stumps. Brian Lara bounces it in. And there he is, touch and go, but uh, as said, Mustafa is on his way. And that's the sort of thing that Bill was talking about. A couple of wickets puts the pressure back on Pakistan. Five for 163. Was a Mac from a very dangerous low order batsman. Joins Jarvid Meendad. He's at nine strikers in Was a Mac. He's a good striker. 
He's only an average of 13.5, but look at that career strike rate, 94.7. High score of 86. That's five for 163. The ask is 198. This was the previous run out. Brian Lara, the fieldsman, doesn't panic. Steadies, bounce, throws it in. Well taken by Carl Hooper, and there wasn't a lot of doubt about that. Tim Yorker will beat Richardson. The sweeper's out there, he's deep. Coming back to the second, it's Keith Arthur, a good throw. Good running by Jarvid. The street fighter went straight to the wicketkeeper as well, didn't hold a course. And you Murray got that ball beautifully. The throw was just a fraction wide. Good pick up. The throw was just a little bit wide there. Jarvis safely home. And dead on 48. Make that 49. Very hard to stop batsmen getting those quick singles at this late stage of the game. You've only got four fieldsmen in the circle. 26 balls, which is a little bit closer with cover now for Wazamakram. Oh, what a shot. Straight down the ground. Mid-off coming around. Mid-on coming around. Good save. Jarvid back for two. A wonderful cricketer Wazamakram is. He really is a natural talent. He hit that full pitch straight down the ground with tremendous timing and power. Bishop punches that to Arthur in a deep point, just a single. That brings up the 50. Seven twos and 34 singles in his 50. What an important innings it has been in the context of this game. Pakistan were under quite a bit of pressure when Jarvid came to the wicket, but the cool head of the experienced player and now captain of the Pakistan side has put them in a position where they should win the game. Macron gets that pass point. Fiersman coming around from deep cover. Happy with two. Simmons the Fiersman. Good throw. Good strong arm. Got the outfield throw and he's inside the circle. He had one or two chances for run outs today, Simmons, and couldn't hit the timber. Back through wildly. Good throw here from the deep. Good 70 metre throw on the fall to the wicketkeeper, Junior Murray. So the World Cup champions starting well here. Five for 176. 47th over. One. Going to be close. Yeah. Missed. That was out. It was Carl Hooper too. He was on the ball quickly. Couldn't find contact with the stumps. Was an acronym. Pulls and pulls well. Simmons is a square leg, he'll clean up after they run two. Keeps them on their way to what will be a very good victory. They've paced themselves well, it hasn't been sparkling cricket by any means. The West Indians bowled very well early. Ambrose and Bishop, but the Pakistanis, they don't panic these days. They take their time, they sum up the situation pretty well. Well timed and placed. Simmons, the man at deep backward point or forward point, gathers in the beautifully timed stroke from Wasamacra. Seven balls remaining, only the four runs. One good hit finishes it for Pakistan. Charvet, me and Dad's been out there for quite a bit of this innings, done a lot of running. That look about him when he came to the wicket that he wanted to be there when Pakistan won. He looks like he should achieve it. Swing and miss. Over. It's the over. And the final over. David just works it down to fine leg. Five for 195. 198 the target.
West Indies just unable to make enough runs to put some pressure on Pakistan to compound the problem. They've bowled quite a few no balls. Pakistan would be very happy to get away with the first up win. Oh, what a shot. There it is. He just clips off his toes before it wasn't Akram. He moved to 21. So a very comfortable victory in the end for Pakistan. A well-judged run chase. Not spectacular, but very, very efficient and professional. Richie Richardson will be disappointed that they didn't make more runs and then that they let Pakistan off some of the pressure by bowling too many no balls. Javed me and Dad, the man in the middle there with Wazam Akram, two very happy men. Javed me and Dad has taken over the captaincy of. of the It is. Yeah. Oh, we'll have a bat, I think, Joe. Thanks, mate. Good game. Good luck. Looks like it might be uh, slightly better for batsmen than the other night. Certainly does. It's uh, a little bit less moisture than the Sydney wicket, yeah. but uh, it looks like a good even wicket and should play well throughout the day. You've made the one change. Uh, Tim May's been bowling well in the one-day game, certainly for, for South Australia. Yeah, he's been bowling particularly well, um, so we've decided to give him a go this game to uh, hopefully keep it tight in the middle overs. All right, good luck. We Thanks look forward so. to a good game. Java, you've also got the one change. Uh, Akiv, the back's OK now? Yes, he's all right. He's feeling well and he's fit enough to play and uh, we put him in the side. Mm. Wasi Makram, have you ever seen anybody better at demolishing tail-enders than that black? <laughs> well, I haven't seen it at the moment. Whenever he got chance, he always proved that. Yeah. And he always win a game for Pakistan. Yeah. He's good all-rounder, especially going number, when especially use the situation pretty well. All right, we look forward to a good game. Good luck. Thank you. Well, there we are. Mark Taylor has won the toss on a lovely day for batting, and that's exactly what Australia will be doing. Perfect conditions. David Boone and Mark Taylor at the crease. Was a Macram to take up the attack from the river end. Left arm over the wicket. Good crowd in already. Should be a tough match, this, for both teams. The wicket looks hard and fast. And two slips and a gully in for Was a Macram. So that we can start this game. Uh, get some pad, maybe some pad as well, so they're off the mark immediately. Needs no leg by called. Express bowler, he's probably the quickest bowler around here at the moment. Beautiful action, the big out swinger is bowling to David Boone. Bowling from the Church Street end. Big shout for old the umpire Steve Randall has a look and shakes his head. Well, that would have been a wicket well ahead of schedule there. Steve Randall ignoring a very good appeal by Wacker Eunice. It's David Boone's first ball from him just probably going down the leg side. A hint of in-swing there again, very close indeed. Perhaps it was, as Bill Laurie said, just the, the bounce that might have got it, might have allowed him to get away with it just above the roll. Well, that's very, very close. Pakistan is well justified in appealing for that one. Well driven. Well done, that David Boone. That's a good reply. We're going to pick up three runs. A good solid off drive. As so often happens, two very good shouts for LBW from uh, Wacker Yunus. David Boone keeps his cool and gets bat on the third delivery of the over. Good solid push through mid-off. Good chase for Ramis Raja. David Boone will probably be quite happy to get down to the non-striker's end and leave Mark Taylor to try and sort out the problems that Wacker Eunice is already starting to set. For straying down the side, and Babel runs for Australia early on here. Had. Well, Timmons in the act, I would think again, the red buys. So it wasn't active, not as active as his partner at the moment. Here comes Wacker Eunice. 
who gets away beautifully. Fine shot of his pads out. Right. There's lightning fast. It'll go all the way, Lord. No, it doesn't. Some good footwork. He sticks a shot to two. Salim Malik with fine leg. Did well. Salim Malik, uh, fine leg, proving that Pakistanis can play football as well as cricket. Very talented batsman. And this time, Waka Yunus just strays. That in-swing strays down the leg side further than before giving David Boone the chance to whip this ball away on the leg side. Still early days yet, but these two openers just settling down. They've got a long time left to bat, long time left available. It's a fine shot. <laughs> Anthony York will go up, Taylor found the gap mid-wicker off his toes. He runs three. Mackie Yunus with a beautiful, strong action. Always trying to bowl you out. Hence the opportunity to score runs. Once again, goes in fine in the edge. But it's cost him four on this occasion. That really raced away. I don't think he was up a little bit too pleased with the, the performance there. That ball finding the edge the field that third man not trying really to get around it trying to run directly at the ball which isn't the right thing to do at all the best thing to do is to head for the boundary and try and get behind the ball plenty of effort going in there from Akib a bit of a grunt as he delivers the ball Akib striving for pace on this pitch which possibly might not be the right. That's taken the glove. Plenty of bounce there for Wazim Akram. And a good take by uh, Rashid Latif, the wicketkeeper. This is the first delivery that has bounced as high as that. Without Wazim Akram seemingly putting too much effort into it. It was pitch short enough. Very good effort there by the wicketkeeper. Third man. And Shabed Meander that gully, just missing that. Going slightly too quickly for Shabed there. That's got to be very close, yes. Three appeals for LBW against David Boone this morning, and the third one has brought success for Akib Javid. Akib Javid certainly has bowled well this morning. He has replaced Wakar Yunis, stemmed the flow of runs, and successful. Coming back sharply at David Boone, umpire Randall, in no doubt about that one. Australia lose their first wicket. David Boone goes for 14. It's 1 for 32, Australia. Dean Jones hasn't got into full swing yet. Nice stroke from Jones. He might have uh, thought at first he was going to get two out of that, but some good feeling from... Uh, I'll see if Mushtabo has stopped that. pitching outside leg stump. Akib's uh, not absolutely certain about that. Yep, would have hit the stumps, but just pitched outside. Cleverly 
places this away wide of the short third man. They'll run very quickly and get three runs. Mushtaq Ahmed comes round to pick it up. This is the theory of slow left arm orthodox. The ball drifting in. And the attempt is to get the ball to turn away from the right-handed batsman. That, as the animation shows there, it's a very good delivery indeed. Good shot from Mark Taylor. Over two. I'm going to come back very quickly. And the moment's excitement there as uh, Rashid Latif took the bails off. Very good take by the wicketkeeper, the ball bouncing just in front of him. Excellent take and uh, well worth the appeal. Mark Taylor really was struggling there. Mustak Ahmed. Mark Taylor trying to drag this ball from outside the off stump. A lot of unprotected spaces, space for one on the leg side, but succeeds in deflecting the ball. And the third man, it's buys given by Carl Timmins. It was the wrong one. And it beat everybody. I'd say that the keeper didn't actually pick that one. He looked as though he was heading the other way, as if for a leg spinner. Welcome back to Bell Reeve Hobart. Surrounded by the sea and the mountains. Australia hasn't hit a boundary. It's the last 22 overs, so they're picking up their singles and their twos. Jones driving at the pitch, he'll hit for the single down to Long On. Long off, in fact. It's one for 100 after 29 overs. The run rate steady rather than great, so Taylor will have to try and lift it here. He cannot get through the off. Too much pressure on... War Brothers and Damien Martin, Healy and Rifle. Taylor chips that. Wow, that's a good shot. He gets that on the half bowl. It's over mid wicket. They pick up two. Good shot. Positive strength. Ian Jones, as usual, batting quite well in this one day game. No boundaries yet, but he has been scoring quite fluently on both sides of the wicket. It's out and that could be six, it's going all the way, there it goes. Yes, that's over the fence. Sweeping that over square leg, just what the doctor ordered as far as Australia is concerned. Yes, Dean Jones certainly is the type of player that can accelerate the scoring rate. If he spends enough time at the crease, he's definitely the man. Very good shot this by Dean Jones. Drives that down to long off, just a single. 12 off the over, one for 120. He's been out there for a while. It's really up to him now to capitalise on that situation. Oh, and that's out. Caught behind. Yes, that bounced a little bit. He went to try and cut the ball away. It perhaps was a little bit close to him. And uh, the way he's looking at the pitch there would suggest that it bounced a bit more than he expected. Well, that's the end of the Australian captain on his way back to the pavilion having used up a lot of balls. Well, you can say he was a bit unlucky there. This ball definitely does pop. You can see the readjustment there that Mark Taylor had to make very, very quickly. It was really a gesture of self-defence. Well caught again by Rashid. The Australian captain on his way back for a slowish 46. For a few gold up here, Australia now two for one, two, four. New batsman is Stephen War. Still batting above his brother, which is a bit of a mystery to me. However, there is no doubt a reason for that. Occurred out there. Here we go. Mark Taylor set himself for the cut. He was defeated completely by the fact this ball did pop bounced alarmingly differently to the, the way he was expecting it to. 
And in the end, Mark Taylor, I think, was quite happy just to jerk his head out, the, out of the line. Looks back very suspiciously at the crease. Always hit the stumps, but comfortably home. War and Jones very, very quick. And Jones calling for that. I think the run was always there. Dean Jones is ever very much on the lookout for these sharp singles. He makes it comfortably. And uh, Akif Javid actually does well to turn and hit the stumps there, but without enough power, and slightly off balance as his feet slipped. Steve Waugh comfortably home for his first run. It's the only mistake Stephen Waugh made there was not to get between himself and uh, the bowler. Well, uh, now for sure he's playing very well there Dean Jones for his 50 only 68 balls a lot quicker than his captain was able to score and reflected in that strike rate there 73.5 that's a good strike rate for Dean Jones today that's it the boundary four mistaking the intentions there of Steve Waugh latching on to a delivery from Akib Java that just strayed down the leg side there's no man out at deep square leg three men up on the leg side for that ball and Steve Waugh just clips it over the top and watches it run down to the boundary knowing full well that no one's going to cut that one off and in fact to reflect that shot Java Mirnet has now slipped the man back to deep square leg to the wall there again on the leg side he's bowling pretty straight at the moment it's just getting back to Jones he's second behind Alan Border in runs scored in one day cricket for Australia Yes, he's gone. Runs too often. Dean Jones going back for the second. He doesn't like it, actually. Glaring at umpire Randall there. He thought he'd got in. But I must say from here, it looks as if he was always going to be in trouble. Very often, though, when the keeper has to take the bails off, it takes a little bit of extra time. This will be an interesting replay. Well, Dean Jones has made himself a fearsome reputation as a very quick runner between the wickets. Turns and comes straight back. It's a good throw in from Sahel. You can see jo Jonesy just struggling there. And it's comfortably short. There's no reason for Dean Jones to be upset with that decision. If anything, I think he'll be more upset with himself for misjudging that second run. It was a crucial time for Australia there. They lose their third wicket now for 138. Dean Jones is infallible with his running. He is a wonderful runner. But he always looked to be having a problem here. Uh, he was a good uh, three quarters of a metre out. <laughs> Everyone was uh, applauding the brilliant fielding out there. But in the end, it was the loose throw that uh, just made the difference. Sally Mullick. Rashid Latif has a habit of charging out from the stumps where perhaps on that occasion he might have been better to have just backed off a metre and taken the ball on the first bounce. So the Malik will uh, come into action again. Once again the throw is a bit offline. he got the glasses off before he took the catch surely not there's a no ball clipped very hard to uh, Sahail Amir Sahail's right hand he's done a tremendous job to catch it 
terrific catch. No, he took the glasses off afterwards. Thank heavens for that. strokes like that just little tickles around the corner and uh, three runs providing Steve Ball makes it the other end will do a lot to get them up to that 210 figure that's wonderful running get three for that Steve War had the advantage there of uh, being the man at the non-strikers end Mark War was on the back foot playing the shot and Steve was going to the danger end terrific running Hasn't bowled too well today, uh, Mushtaq. He bowled very well against the West Indies. He may have to, uh, with the field that he's been given by Jarvid, he may. All seems nice and calm out there. And hit wicket, or bowled, or both. Underneath edge onto the stumps. I think what Jarvid was saying was he wants the batsman on the front foot. He doesn't want him cutting. Well, he's actually picked up a wicket with Mark War cutting, but uh, perhaps a little fortunate. The ball stayed down a bit. The cut shot was definitely on. The ball was good enough. Mark War has got the underneath edge and dragged it back onto off stump. Jarvid still isn't happy because he wants the batsman playing on the front foot with that sort of field placing. But uh, a wicket goes in the book against uh, Mushtaq's name. is Damien Martin well placed there were shouts there from the wicket keeper uh, as soon as he saw that it was Wazim Akram chasing the ball shouts to back up Must be out. Very, very good fielding. Just a little push on the offside. And the fielder came in. Once again, it was on his right hand, his correct hand. Amir Sahail, the man who was involved in the last run out, once again involved there. He also took the catch off the no ball. So he's been very good in the field, Amir Sahail and uh, picking off Steve Waugh by about half a metre. It's five for 172. Ian Healy is the new batsman. Steve Waugh run out. Brilliant piece of work from uh, Amir Sohail. It's a bit close. Oh, that would have been nearly out too. Wasn't Ackman was there quickly. Damien Martin took him on. He's a very quick young man. That was very close indeed. This is a good contest between some quick legs and a quick arm. Wasim Ackram would have got him. Would have been a nasty tight decision again for Cole Timmins to adjudicate on. It was ever at high speed, very hard to give these decisions. The fact that the uh, ball missed the stumps by a whisker. And that's a very good coming right there. Well, this will be gone. Misses. He's got him. Oh, that's good fielding. Damien Martin really going for a single that wasn't on there. The backward point. The throw was from side on. It was a direct hit. So hail again. Doing brilliantly in the field for Pakistan. That's a disaster for young Damien Martin and for Australia. The second run out in the matter of overs. But a good throw from side on. It's the same fielder again as well. Amasa Hale. Second successive direct hit. Comes in very quickly takes aim, Daniel Martin has nowhere to go, he's already stranded a long way down the wicket. If he hit, he was out, he watched, he hit, he went. It's a slow walk back for Damien Martin, a disappointing end for this young man at the start of what promises to be a very brilliant international career. He's gone, run out, Australia now 6 for 179. Full rifle taking guard. Amir Sohail having a big influence on the score here with some brilliant fielding. It was an excellent throw from Sidon. He was on his left arm in the middle, but he only had about one and a half stumps to hit. As Damien Martin, I think, went and was sent back. There's the throw. 
almost at the base of the stumps, just hit the stumps, the bar took a long time to fall off, in fact, for a moment I thought he'd missed. He's back in the hutch, run out. For five, Damien Martin. Steve War and Damien Martin. Full rifle off the mark. So Hale threw the other one to the keeper, overthrows, that's slack. That's when you uh, are applying the screws to Australia. A foolish overthrow and Wazza not happy. And rightly so. Well, no bowler likes to see runs scored off his bowling. And especially when it comes from what can only be described as a moment of carelessness. <laughs> the wicket keeper's deciding that's turned a bit off the, uh, the rough turf by the wicket there, but you have to say he was just a little bit slack there. Not a good throw coming back in. It's beautifully bowled, and he gets away with it. Paul Roth, he gets a bottom edge, and it's squeezed out uh, square leg for two. Attempted Yorker. Useful delivery from Wacker Yunus. It's one of his trademarks, his in-swinging quick Yorker. Paul Rifle actually does well to get a bat down on that. Only the three men on the leg side bypass his square leg, who chases it to leave Paul Rifle with two to the score. Rival runs and uh, previous winners of the International Cricket of the Year award includes. That's a very good over, and it's well run. Excellent cricket. Six for 188. Paul Rifle might try and get a boundary or two here. There's only been three fours and one six so far in innings. There's a chance, and he whips that, and he gets four. Four ball, four runs. This is not a very good delivery from Asik Mustaba, the first of his spell. Ian Healy had time, really, just to pick his spot. Nice, gentle, full toss. Plenty of space at square leg. That really is four help yourself runs. Make it two here. It's only chipped. It's, it's good running. Brings up the 200 for six. And the 47th over. There's a call from Rifle. The throw almost hit the Zayas. The mid wicket falls over. This is going out pretty close to the boundary. Just cut off there. The fieldsman backing up has unfortunately slipped over there. That must have been very close to being a run out again. From so hard, he threw the ball. He's turned into a little comedy of errors at the end there, but Amasa Hell, in his typical position, his accustomed position just behind square on the offside there. Again, with a very accurate throw, might not have been enough to dismiss the batsman, but poor old Astrid Mustaba slipped as he backed up and could do nothing to stop that ball. So overthrows resulted. Here we hits in the air. This should be out, Jarvis coming around. It's the leading edge, yes. Wacky Yunus picks up the wicket of Ian Healy. That's a very handy wicket for Pakistan. A very dangerous player, Healy, in the final overs. Well, a leading edge, the problem here for Ian Healy. Aiming a, a big blow over mid-wicket again. Trying to go with the in-swing of Wacky Yunus, but succeeds only in lobbing it comfortably in the air. Javi Mianded sets the example as captain. Ian Healy is gone. It's been a good partnership, as we were saying. We'll just come up and view another angle. You see the ball going straight up, not very high. Oh, and Mianda judges it comfortably. And Malik waiting in reserve. And just in case you've missed it. Here we go again. And Wacky Yunus picks up a wicket off his final... Batting line up, but the Australian bowlers will bowl well on this pitch. They'll bowl good line and length. As Wazza Macklin comes in for the final over. It's well struck to middle. Off, throws out. No, my word, that must have been very close. Good throw, full rifle making good ground. Dermot making good ground. Well, they've been very accurate all day, the Pakistani fieldsmen. 
I think we're just going to see there that um, Craig McDermott might just have got away with that one. He's uh, two or three feet short as this very good throw comes in from Ramis Raja. Specialist mid-off there doing the right job, but uh, not given. Oh, any advantage, that's a good shot, so that's an extra bonus run there. Actually, with the naked eye, it looked out, but you never know, and uh, umpire Randall was just on the back foot moving back, trying to get into good position. Well, it always has to be said that at full speed, these are definitely hard decisions to make. The umpire's got to make his own ground, got to settle himself down, as you see there, as that ball comes through, as the bat runs through quickly, never easy to make the decision. That's well struck. It's going all the way. A four. It's a very good, clean hit. The final delivery. It's chipped down to mid-wicket. Just the single. So a good effort by the tail for Australia. <laughs> 229 will be the target for Pakistan. At 4.58. Wife are not out 23. McDermott not out 2. 7 for 228. About to be bowled by Craig McDermott. Oh, there's a pretty good start for Pakistan. Just a nice, gentle little stroke away on the offside. Might have thought he was going to get one, then suddenly reckon he had a chance of two. And it whizzed away to the boundary. Ian Chappell's in the comedy box now, and with him is Tony Gregg. Thanks very much, Richie. Well, the Australians off uh, something just over 300 deliveries hit five fours. Pakistan have one from just one delivery. And gone. Straight down mid-on throat. Damien Martin is the man at mid-on. So uh, a good start there for Craig McDermott and Australia. Yes, well, he uh, decided that he was going to go for it no matter where it was. It was pretty well pitched up. And here he went with the shot and in the air straight to Damien Martin. And uh, good players don't drop straightforward catches like that one. So having gone for four off the first ball, McDermott hasn't exactly had a bad over. He'd be happy with that. One for six, Pakistan. So then Malik, batting at number three for Pakistan. At 35 in the match against the West Indies in Perth. And he's already lost his opening partner. Yes, that's how it happened. Straight to mid on there, or wide mid on. And uh, what a nice bonus that was for Craig McDermott as if they were trying to get them all in the first uh, 20 odd overs there right from the word go they were going after him just over uh, backward square's head Dean Jones there second boundary after just two overs well, that's a good shot pretty well played if he can keep that economy right down to 40 he'd be very happy because he's been creeping up on the front line is my guess Chipping the ball in the air when there are infielders in. That's going to be the problem for Pakistan. Michael Whitney claims his first victim. An easy catch there for Steve War. Yes, Steve War in position there at uh, cover. He's taken some good catches through the season in that position. And uh, that was one of the easier ones. Straight to him and no trouble at all for 10. Job, but me and Dad has exactly the same uh, higher score as Ramiz Raja. 119 not out. Two slips in the gully. Back in field here. Up and a bit high. Bakar Yunus had a couple of shouts early in his spell. Uh, very close, but I think in both cases they were a little high. Lift back a little bit, and uh, as a result of that, a 
Got that one away down to the boundary. Beautifully played by Javid Miande. Uh, just a little bit short, that ball, and uh, he's obviously had a little think about things at uh, the drinks break and decided, well, if it's going to be short, it's going to go. And it's about time, too, because Pakistan are making a big hole for themselves here at Bell Reeve Oval. And Harley played a positive stroke against some very good line and length bowling from the Australians. And they're over six runs per over now. They have eight, eight wickets in hand, but still 194 runs to score. So Australia are well on top. We get peel for LBW. Yes, he's given him. He's gone. LBW. Big wicket, this one. The Pakistan captain, once again, I think, trying to just work the ball away. Straight delivery. And that is a big wicket for Australia. Javid Miandad's out. This has been working the ball across the line of the pads. I guess that looked close enough to middle leg, didn't it? He was back. High Colton's had no trouble at all in judging that LBW. Pakistan, 3 for 41. Umzamam al Haq is out there now. Have a look at that strike rate. 83.7 runs per 100 balls. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's a magnificent stroke player. Salim and Javid were very stodgy in their approach to this target. In the air, going down towards the fence. Is it over the top? Yes, it is. Into the crowd. And this young man shows you can hook. His traction short. He was quickly onto the back foot. Cleared the fence. There was two men down. Whitney Fine and Joan Square. But it went way over the top. Just swung around onto the back leg and put it over the fence. Just one ball to go now. And that's beautifully hit. Salim Malik uh, is considered by the players to be one of the most dangerous batsmen in limited overs cricket. That's one of the reasons why. Certainly a very good shot that by Salim Malik trying to confuse the bowler by backing away from the stumps. But beautiful a play through the offside. And he's, uh, he's succeeded in upsetting Rifle's uh, line and length. And Inzamam coming back to the third. And it's well run by Inzamam, not so Salim Malik. It's three for 63. That's a catch it. Craig McDermott goes back, then comes forward. Obviously uh, lost the ball in the crowd, I would say. First couple of paces were back. The ball is also going into the breeze, and that would have caused it to drop on McDermott. But that should have been taken. Craig McDermott slightly misjudging this. Not quite getting to it. He did take a few steps back, thinking perhaps it would carry to him, but the breeze, coming into the breeze, it fell a bit short. Oh, almost. Mark Waugh having just as much bad luck as his brother Steve. That was almost the end of Inzaman Ulhaq. He did not quite loving it. It's going to land short and wide of third man. Tim May is down there. Well and truly into this uh, World Series competition now. And that's well hit. It's difficult to pick this ball up. It's a bright day and uh, not easy to pick the ball up here at Bell Reeve. A similar shot to the one in the man 
will have tried previously but this time the ball was more pitched up a lot easier for him to get to it and hit it from outside the off stump to behind square it on and straight to him Damian Martin he took the first catch of the innings and he's got rid of the dangerous Inzimam al Haq. yes this is a good wicket for Australia just when Pakistan seemed to be creeping up on them with this run rate in Zaman Ulhaq goes very comfortable catch there by Damian Martin Pakistan lose their fourth wicket four for nine to one A little surprised that uh, Asif Mushtabar is uh, coming in ahead of Wazim Akram in this situation. I thought they may have sent Akram in to try and post some quick runs. So just nudges up just a little bit. 7.35. That brings up the 100. 195 balls taken to get the 100. Four wickets are down. Fifty for Salim Malik and four for 108 for Pakistan. But that is that's exactly what Pakistan needs. That's his second boundary, and I think he recognised that there was a gap down there and that he had to take the ball over the top of the field no matter where it was and this is how he did it just waited for one to be reasonably well pitched up and hoiked it away over he's hit that one too oh, goodness. the face of the bat at a tremendous rate now that's what Pakistan have to do have to hit at least one of those every over ah, well caught didn't have to move all that far but it went very fast and Healy took it two hands just away to his right that was really moving along said he was it was a good catch it went flying off the bat and uh, no doubt about Healy here got him and up the ball goes pretty happy about that I think both of them were drinks coming out on the ground and Pakistan at the moment five down for 123 years of age was interesting Taylor across quickly trying to slip in under the guard there of Wazim Akram who he thought may have just been dozing and I think he might have been right he was dozing there's no doubt that he had to stretch a long way and bang hits the stumps and he's out by at least six inches well he's gone It's very unusual. Perhaps there was such a loud nick out in the centre that they only seemed half interested. The batsman certainly went. And that could have been an inside edge. Yes, the interesting thing was the whole slide didn't go up. So have a look at this there. A little faint tickle on the inside edge of the bat. Through to the keeper. And that's the end of Wazi Makram. So... He's on his way back to the pavilion. Six for 129. Got rid of Salim Malik. That's an excellent save by the skipper. Once again, Mark Taylor has done a very good job as captain. 
Alex has got himself in the right place exactly here. It's a very fierce shot from Asif Mustaba. Mark Taylor down a bit very quickly. Good change of pace there from Mike Whitney. In the end, uh, Latif got out of it quite well. Unfortunately, Pakistan are going to need a bit more than this. Safe into the gap. May not go all the way to the boundary. Yes, it does. One bounce, in fact. The man was back at long on. There's a man both at long on and long off. But Asif Mustabur pulls this ball wider. A long way up into the air. A couple of bounces and into the fence. That's well hit. Find the boundary. They need to do it many times, though. That was nicely struck by Rashid Latif. Mike Whitney tried to follow the batsman as he moved towards the leg side, but nicely picked up, beautifully timed over the infield there. And four useful runs. See there, Mike Whitney follows, that, follows the batsman towards the leg side. Trying to cramp the batsman for room, but not quite succeeding, and uh, a very fine shot indeed. Now that has uh, forced Mark Taylor to send a man back at long on and bring up the fine leg. Well, that's a beautiful shot. Mark wore no chance, and he was only a few metres away from it. Gee, that was hit well. well that's a mark of the talent of this young man. No real effort in either of these shots. Just good timing. This time giving himself room and hitting it through the offside. And you see there Mark War only had 10 metres or so to make. But was never going to do so. He's charged and he's whacked up to mid-wicket. Tower doesn't pick it up. There's two more. Nine runs off the over. That's what's needed almost. Six for 182. Two good strikers of the ball, McDermott steaming in. He's hit that, and that's going all the way. One, two bounces into the fence. So this game is not over. As if hitting through McDermott. McDermott's been superb here today. Just straying maybe on weak stump. Just the right length for Asif Whisper to get underneath this ball and swing the bat through it. And suddenly there seem to be a lot of gaps in this field. Mark Taylor's positioned his men very well through the day. But when batsmen do take these risks and do connect, there seem to be a lot more gaps. That's missed. They should get two here. Take on Whitney. They do. All of a sudden, just a little bit of, uh, not panic, but uh, concerned by the Australian fieldsmen now. They've been comfortable all day. Rashid on strike. He's struck the ball beautifully. This time he gets the best shot in the book. It's past the man inside the circle. A fine leg. It may not go all the way. It does, you know, and that's four more. It's all happening here, Belrive. Well, a little bit of luck there for Rashid Latif. Aiming this ball away on the offside. Craig McDermott follows him well into his legs and just the inside edge there, beating the man on the edge of the circle. Steve Waugh, who will really change up the pace here and confuse these batsmen with his change of pace. They've got a slow of balls, and he picks that one pretty well and hits it straight. McDermott's got a good arm, they won't take him on. They do. No, they don't. What a throw. He's out! Oh, what a good piece of work! He went to sleep, the young lad, and McDermott hit the stump for arm, just a break in concentration, and that's a great work and probably a lucky one. Well, the pressure just tells in the end. The batsmen knew that they needed at least two of all to win this match. The correct decision was taken initially not to run for that ball, not to go for the second, but Rashid Latif there just forgets one vital thing, that he has to get back into his ground. And it's a very good throw from Craig McDermott. Rashid Latif goes for 39. Pakistan now 7 for 197. Pakistan on strike, slow ball. It's in the end, a safe a little chip over Mark Talbot mid-wicket. Happy with two. 
but it was a very telling blow that throw from Craig McDermott. Just a little bit of inexperience there when he was sent back to the second. And quickly picks it up. Arm like a rocket. Look at that throw. Steve Ball's got no idea what's going on. Just gets out the road. There's that's in the air. It's going over. May. May's going back looking at the ball. He's not quick. Bounces into the fence. So Pakistan will not lie down. Well, Waka Yunus has struck a lot of telling blows in his time. He can't enjoy his, uh, can't enjoy his batting. Gets a ball of good length, which just allows him the chance to get the bat underneath it. Hoists it a long, long way over long on. And that's four useful runs. Let's hit to Tower at Whitey Smith on position, just a single. McDermott bowling straight. On his tenth and final over. It's well played. It's not a boundary, but at least they're scoring off every ball. Trying to keep the door open. Does like to put back to ball. Well, they need a six. He doesn't get. Green ball, full pitch by McDermott. Fine bowling. He's been the best of the Australian bowlers this afternoon. It's his fourth wicket. That's beautifully bowled by Craig McDermott. The ideal length and line. Like a Eunice aiming to hit this ball interstate. And really forgot to look at it. And if you forget to look at it, that's what happens. All effort, no result. Waka Yunus goes. Pakistan are 8 for 207. Mustak Ahmed. New batsman Mustak Ahmed gets some pat onto that. Goes down to final leg. They'll come back for three. We'll watch the umpire for the call. Three leg buys, but they all count. This is the 49th over. It's well struck. It's wide and mid on. They may come back for the two. They've got to, I think. Oh, let's go. He's gone. No, he's safely home. Well, it's happening. It's the end for Craig McDermott. Four for 42 off 10. Eight for 212. Stack chips in the air, this will be out. Yes, caught inside the circle. Off a full pitch by Paul Wright of a duck to Mustak. Could hit that anywhere, I guess. It was a slow full toss. I'm afraid Mustak was completely deceived by the pace of this delivery from Steve Warp. Rather surprised him, and instead of making what I'd expect to be schoolboy contact to hit this ball well out of the ground. Completely taken by surprise, a nice simple catch to Paul Rifle. Makes no mistake with that. Mustart looks perplexed, somewhat confused. Is escorted off the field by the duck. Akif Diab at the new batsman. He's not on strike. As they ran through as that catch was taken by Paul Rifle. In comes Steve War. As if gets it past Whitney, that'll go all the way for four. Whitney trying hard, but it's going to go into the gutter. So this young that's been playing very well indeed. As if on strike to war. Doesn't get a boundary here. They go for two, surely. Come on, run. Oh dear, oh dear. He's played a lot of cricket. Akip Jarvid, and that was pathetic. Left his partner stranded. There was always two. This is dreadful running by Akif Jarvid, there's no doubt about it whatsoever. He's never got out of second gear. He should just have set off, run. He should have known he was going to turn and come back for two, come what may. He's hit that long and high. It's bouncing into the side screen for four. That's why I didn't want to run, but... As if Mustafa, the non-strikers in, pacing around, plays superbly for 50. It's a 
That will be a slow ball change of pace by Stephen Waugh. He's hit it somewhere. It's not going to go for four. It's just going to square leg for a single. Throwing it a six. A no ball. Six would tie it. A no ball would help. I think we just done a bit better earlier. Well, pitch is going to go for six, is it the man out there? There it goes. Is it over? It's over. A tie, can you believe that? Pakistan coming from nowhere to tie this match. Unbelievable finish. A wonderful hit, the slower pitch from Steve Wall was picked up by this young man and he's hit it right out of the ground. I cannot believe that they've got up and tied this match. Well, that's an incredible finish to this game. Just when we've been saying for the last hour and a half how badly Pakistan had really messed their own chances up by going so slowly early in the innings. This young man, Asif Mustafa, has taken the game by the scruff of the neck. He's got a full toss from Steve Waugh. He's got his lone support on the ground congratulating him. Mushtaq arrives out as well. He's still got his pads on from his previous dismissal. And somehow, from nowhere, Pakistan have tied the game. And I'm sure the Australians cannot believe that. 16 runs off the last day from Steve Waugh, one of the, West, one of the best one-day bowlers in the world. And the young lads put him into the hill with a well-struck shot. It was a slower, foolish delivery. He waited for it. He didn't go too early. He swung onto the back foot, and there it went way over the fence for six. The white ball crashing right into the back of the hill there, and the match is a tie. That's a great shot to finish the game with. Steve Waugh trying probably to bowl the Yorker again, which is what he would have liked to have seen. It's a very good shot to hit the full toss like this. Quite often bats from Miss Q when presented with what counts as a surprise, surprise full toss. The crowd out there can't believe it. And it looks as though the Pakistanis are stunned as well. They can't really believe what's going on either. Oh yes, they've just noticed they've tied the game. It's an extreme non-reaction from Waka Yunus though. I'm sure he doesn't know really what's quite going on. He's uh, looking at the television set in that room there. He looks stunned. And the, uh, the man of the match, uh, $500, and the Baccarat Crystal, the Benson Hedges Baccarat Crystal uh, man of the match award, Asif Mushtaba. Well played, tremendous innings. Much, yeah. uh, at one stage, I really don't think we won the match, but uh, uh, later on, when we, uh, Rashid Atif came to the uh, pitch, and uh, then we decided to hit out in the last uh, uh, remaining overs, nearly about 11 runs per over. But uh, after the Rashid Atif got run out, uh, I still think that we can win the match and on the last ball when I hit uh, the six I realized that uh, might be we won the match but uh, when I look at the scoreboard it is uh, 228 you know and it's uh, got time. Uh, you make a habit of doing this against Australia. I seem to recall you did it in Perth in the in the yeah. in the Perth Challenge there a few years ago. Yeah, it's, uh, you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> what did you get off the last over there? It was about the same sort of I score, was it? Nine runs, you know. Nine. In the, nine uh, in the last wicket, as there. Up right, yeah. yeah, yeah, and 16 today. Uh, you must have been delighted when you saw the full toss coming down for the last ball. Yeah, I was uh, prepared for a slow one from the Steve Waugh, but uh, it is my fortune that he gave me a full toss and I hit the six runs. You know. <laughs> teams for today's game, the West Indians, Desmond Haynes and Brian Lara, Phil Simmons, Richie Richardson, Skippering, then Gus Logie, Keith Arthurton, Carl Hooper, Junior Murray, Ian Bishop, Kirtley Ambrose, Anderson Cummins and Jimmy Adams is the 12th man. That's a very strong side for the West Indies and uh, the Pakistan team, Amir Sohail, Ramiz Raja, Salim Malik, Javed Me and Dad, Insamam ul Haq, Asif Mushtaba, the hero of Tasmania, so far as the Pakistan team is concerned, Wazim Akram, Rashid Latif, who played very well down there, kept wickets well and then batted superbly late in the innings, Waqar Yunus, Mushtaq Ahmed, Akib Javed and Naved Anjum. We make sure we should try and win the game. And obviously, if anything happened, yeah. it will happen either batting first or second. Yeah, right. You must have been delighted to have got out with a point the other day down in Hobart. That was an amazing recovery, wasn't it? That's right, yes. I was very happy and team was very happy. At least we got one. We got one stretch we were looking. We might not get anything. Mm, yeah. But we end up with the one point. It was great. All right, let's hope we have another exciting one. 
Richie, uh, I guess uh, getting some runs, apart from that one game in Perth, getting runs has got to be the objective for the West Indies. Yeah, most certainly. Um, if there's any concern about our, our cricket, it's uh, our batting. We're a bit inconsistent and uh, it's a very beautiful batting wicket here and uh, we look forward to getting a very large total. Yes, it's certainly a uh, far cry from what you had to play on in Sydney. You know, that was a bit uh, tough for batsmen. Yeah, it was a bit difficult there in mm. Sydney, but um, I guess it was because of the, the weather and all that. Uh, yeah. But here it's always a, a very placid wicket. All right, good luck. and he's decided to send the West Indies into bat. David Meehan-Bad is the man leading Pakistan out onto the field. Pakistan have two of the greatest fast bowlers in the world today in their side and it's going to be very interesting to see whether they swing the ball in these humid conditions. Ozzy Macram hangs away as he guides it down to third man. Interesting combination, Wara and Desmond Haynes. Uh, Desmond Haynes, the veteran. Big slash outside the off stump, going down towards third man. Falls over, knocks it down. Brian Lara comes back for three. It's a 90 metre throw. Haynes is slow. The keeper's gone from the wrong end. A bit of confusion there amongst the fieldsmen. They're all running to the non strikers, and there was three backing up. But Latif went for the stumps. But the danger was at the non strikers end. That's very well picked up down there. Wazi Makram getting his throw in. It's a long, long way down there. Asif Mustaba hit the six and won the match for them. Well, that's the end of him because he got the swinging walker in. Desmond Haynes trying to drive Wazi Makram. He's bowled neck and crop and when he gets it right, he's a magnificent bowler. He was full and it was quick and it swung and it took the middle stump right out of the Adelaide soil. A great breakthrough. What a magnificent delivery. He hasn't really got it right today. This is the first one he's got on target. Look at that middle stump. Back she goes. And there's no more beautiful sight for a fast bowler than to see the middle stump lying flat on its back. That's the situation there. It's not a great uh, feeling for the batsman. I don't think uh, he even had a look at that. He didn't want to see the damage behind him. Desmond Haynes out bowled and the West Indies are one for 16. Phil Simmons makes his way to the crease. Beautiful bowling by Wazza Macklin. He's a little bit of stray early on. That pitch right and swung late. Knocked over one of the world's best batsmen, Desmond Haynes. Let's watch the ball here. Seam up and a little bit of swing there and back goes the middle stump. Magnificent delivery. And uh, that delivery has got rid of a dangerous batsman. He's got the helmet on. He's got the pads on. He's got most things protected. running there by Phil Simmons. One boundary down into the corner of the Adelaide Oval. The straight boundaries are very long. Phil Simmons looks like he may have hurt himself stretching out there before he was warm. Might have been that little slip at uh, the non-striker's end, at the northern end that did it. that long corner again this time it'll beat the fieldsman it's been a good over for the West Indies here there's an Akram just straying down the leg side a couple of times to the right hander once to the right hander and once to the left hander just giving them enough room to work with Phil Simmons quite a good player off his pads very strong on the leg side doesn't waste those short deliveries down the leg side so going back to his Record there, strike rate of 72, which is very good for a top order batsman. It's in the air and he's gone. He hasn't added to his average. Didn't do his strike rate any harm. It was an Akram, as the great bowler he is, bounces back after an ordinary start to the over and takes a wicket. That's well bowled. It was the one he pushes away from the right hander. And it moved appreciably. A safe catch there's nothing tremendously difficult about it but it gives Pakistan another breakthrough 27 on the board now and two men out 
Richie Richardson, the West Indian capstan captain coming to the crease. 30 years of age. He was responsible for re removing Phil Simmons. Well taken at second slip by Sahail. Was continuing on the way up. Took it very comfortably. None of them are easy catches. Awkward height, never sure whether to keep coming up with it, as Amir Sahail did on that occasion, or whether turning the hands over and taking it in the baseball fashion. So the second wicket has fallen. Akram responsible for both. It's over the top. It's a pretty good shot by Richie Richardson. Wide delivery, short and wide. Over the top he went. That's a fierce stroke from Richardson. Looks to me that uh, Akib Javid is just struggling a little with his back this morning. I have a feeling he's wearing a back brace or some form of strapping. Had back trouble in recent weeks. Missed some cricket. And that one's in the air as well. May well get over the short boundary and it has well and truly up into the member stand. Oh, not only over the back row but almost to the foot of the the grandstand, no matter what ground he was playing on in the world, that was always six. The big hit, beautifully timed. There's a front page uh, sports section story here yesterday about the bat he's using, the Bradman bat. On his bowling around his legs, Brian Lara does get a long way across, and Akib Javid has noted it. And he's knocked back leg stump. For some time now, quite a few of the bowlers have been attacking Brian Lara's leg stump. He does go a long way across. Always exposes that leg stump, and this time he loses it. Brian Lara goes. West Indies slides a little bit deeper into trouble. Three for 56. Augustine Logie comes in at uh, number five. Placing Brian Lara, who opened today and lost his leg stump. They have been aiming for that leg stump now for the past two weeks. Finally, they hit it. I'm sure Brian Lara will think a lot about what has happened here today because he's not a youngster who doesn't pay attention to his mistakes. And that's the situation at the moment. Weston is not in too comfortable a position. 56 for three. Richie Richardson's found the gap. Six runs off that over. It's three for 61. Gotcha. And out. Straight down mid wicket throw. The Gus Logie over the years has been a bit of a bunny against left arm orthodox spin. Alan Border has wrapped him up a few times. Certainly caught and bowled, but that uh, really wasn't a very good shot uh, in the situation. Particularly after seeing the ball previously spinning that much. Would have been very difficult to clear that man at mid-wicket. As Logie goes and the Westerners are in deeper trouble. Four for 61 in the 18th over. Keith Atherton, a little bit uh, unlucky in my opinion to be coming in at number six after his performance in the Brisbane Test. He uh, showed tremendous concentration and dedication to the task up there. And that's the sort of thing that is missing. The application is missing uh, in this current West Indies batting lineup at the moment. So I think uh, Keith's a bit stiff to be at six and behind Gus Logie. Well, after that performance, I'm sure Keith will be batting in front of Gus Logie on the next occasion. Big shout from both bowler and behind the wicket. And that's well run. Extremely well run. Two leg buys. He made that out of nothing.
that ball seemingly going across Keith Atherton heading for outside the off stump and Richie Richardson always alert always seeking for get that extra run I think originally Keith Atherton was getting down the other end as quickly as possible uh, big shout again oh, the ball keeping low Yes, I think originally Keith was getting down the other end so that the umpire didn't get much of a look at the LBW. He was uh, going to get out of there as quickly as he could. Yes, Keith did come across his thumbs quite a bit there. And he was possibly hit in line, but with the direction in which the ball was heading. Oh! No ball, and it's been clouted to the boundary by Richie Richardson. He loves those square drives certainly loves anything square square on the offside square on the onside cutting pulling driving square beautifully played there's the pull shot so we've seen them both sides of the wicket uh, the last two balls. One well up, and then the next one too short. Not really the right way to be bowling to Richard Richardson. But when he's in this mood, it's sometimes very difficult to find the right length. He impresses me as a batsman who's maturing very quickly on this tour, Keith Arthurton. In the air, but safe. Yes, I think that, uh, that century in the first test in Brisbane has really given Arthurton a lot of confidence, and he uh, he's looking like a very mature batsman now. And taken this time by Inzamam at first slip. He didn't look comfortable against the left hand spinner, uh, left arm spinner, Keith Arthurton. And finally, Sahel has been rewarded. Keith Atherton, I think, is downfall because he was just trying to guide that ball down the third man. Not really attacking too much. He knows the West Indies team is not in a very good position. Just trying to guide it down the third man, not really getting full bat onto the ball. West Indies lose another wicket and slide deeper into trouble. Five for 81. Carl Hooper has arrived at the crease. West Indies are 5 for 81. Keith Arthur and the man just removed. Arthur's been steering this ball to slip, where Inzimam will hack did very well indeed to knock it up. This ball went quite quickly to the slip. Amos Sahel is delighted. Pakistan are very happy. West Indies are in trouble now at 5 for 81. 22 overs have gone which means the scoring rate has been good, but too many wickets have fallen. There's the story of the day. Men out, Haynes, Lara, Simmons, Logie and Arthurton. Oh. Oh. We runs here. Two, possibly three. He's gone very he fine down the leg side. Yeah. And Carl Hooper running very quickly comes back for that third. It's good running by him. Led by signals by umpire Terry Prue. Spinners could well have been very ex expensive to have two in the side and the bowl as well as they have has been a real bonus. Oh, Good shout again from Armour Sahel. Terry Prue not interested the batsman Carl Hooper looking over mid-wicket. There's a big gap in mid-wicket. Just getting his pad outside the line of off stump. Therefore playing a shot and can't be out. Five for 99, West Indies. Five for 100, West Indies. Firm drive into the offside. Not quite fielded cleanly by Jared Biendad. West Indies happy to see the 100 come up. The last 50 came up in 82 balls. The 100 comes up in 179 balls. They might look for two here decide not to
and took two for 26 with one maiden. So the same ploy continuing for Javid Meandad. Yeah. And he runs here. It's a very nicely timed shot by Carl Hooper. The man at deep square was probably too far, too far square there, and uh, this shot by Sex the field runs away very quickly for four. Carl Hooper showing some of the talent that we've talked about so often. Great piece of timing, very good placement. starting to rain there's uh, dark clouds have brought the rain across the Adelaide over with the 34 over stage the West Indies are struggling at 5 for 118 Richardson 48 49 in fact Carl Hooper 18 Sundays are 21 good spirit here between the players unfortunately for the umpires Terry Prue and Steve Davis the light and rain has forced stoppage of play Yes, but it and his team quickly out with the covers. It doesn't seem to be too heavy, but it is very dark. The umpire is making sure the covers are down early on. The Hessian first, and then the protective covers over the top. The Hessian stopped the sweating. It's a shame, really, because Pakistan are doing so well. And this uh, little bit of rain will probably make it difficult for their spinners. The crowd was just building up as well. It's quite warm and humid but very overcast here in Adelaide. Can each bowl nine overs? And three can bowl eight overs. Maximum 42 overs. Just waiting at the moment for the clock to tick over to 1.30, which is when the umpires decided the play would start. Been in the action a lot as well. His little dab shot down towards third man. No, don't be! Well, 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 well. Well, that brings up Richard Richardson's 50. A bit of bat in that one. So Richardson on 50, Carl Hooper down the other end on 19. Up for the second, Let's throw just a little wide. Because I think, uh, just getting back to Michael Holding's observation on the number of overs, eight overs remaining, I think they probably They've allocated 35 minutes for those eight overs, and therefore that the innings would end at 2.05. Big appeal there for LBW. That looked pretty adjacent to me. Umpire was moving away to his left. Umpire Terry Prue. Can't be so frustrating to bowl as that when there's a big appeal and he looks up and sees the umpires walking away. He obviously thought he got outside the line. Let's have another look. Yes, Terry Poo obviously wasn't interested in that pitching going down the leg side. Um, the last ball of the previous over really was some fantastic cricket. Have a look at this. That was a brilliant stop. Very close run over here. But the Matmam just dropping the ball before crashing into the stumps. So one over to go, 42 over match, 6 for 172. Richie Richardson really has turned it on for the West Indies today. Bishop's out there giving him good support, he's on 17 and has the strike. 17 of 13 balls, two fieldsmen back on the leg side, that's it. And there goes the big one, in fact there are three back there, he's underneath it, he's going to get him. <laughs> three of them, they're all spread out there. He's gone for the big six down towards the short boundary down there and as if Mushtabai taking the catch <laughs> driving me and then saying well we worked it out didn't we <laughs> it's six men on the offside three on the onside all out 
and Bishop finds one of them. Comfortably taken there by Asif Mushtaba. In the last over of these 42 overs, Bishop goes 17 runs off just 13 balls, 10 for 1, 72. So Anderson Cumming is coming out there now. He's jogging out to the centre. This is the last over. He's obviously looking forward to a little bit of a hack at uh, the leg spinner. I can promise you there won't be much blocking out there. This is the ball that took the wicket. Just heaved it up in the air down towards mid-wicket and uh, didn't quite get it in the middle of the bat. So as it takes the catch down there. So Richie Richardson's on strike now. And a very stacked offside field, I can tell you, for him. There they are. Five of them almost saving one. And off they go for a run. Really has worked well for them. Those two men just behind Squeal on the offside. Anderson Cummins. That's one leg. That's one leg, yes? Get, 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 get. <laughs> he wanted one oh, that, my goodness. <laughs> He'd hardly hit it off the square, straight to the fieldsman as well. And uh, he wanted one, but Richie Richardson very quickly sent him back. I think the idea was to give Richie Richardson the strike back. <laughs> Certainly no run in that at all but Anderson Cummings eager to give his captain the strike I think whatever happened there he would have attempted a run he's got it away and will they settle for one back for the second they come so as we said a 42 over match one ball to go in this West Indian innings so there's the run rate 4.18 Last ball of the innings. And he hasn't quite middled it. Richie Richardson will get back comfortably. And it's still a little bit of a stumble there. Is he going to get back? Oh, wrong end. <laughs> He's got home, though. <laughs> it's a dreadful feeling when you want to run and you can't. You keep falling over. Well, Anderson Cummins managed to stay on his feet. And as a result, the West Indians get two more to their total. Yes, Anderson Cummings in rolling everything in this over. There he goes, there he goes. Fighting to regain his legs. But at least he has contributed another two runs to the West Indian total. Yes, well, that's the story. The West Indies put into bat today by Pakistan. Richie Richardson made 76. Very good innings. Anderson Cummings finishing up on four not out there. So seven for 177 rate 4.23 per over and uh, the bowling figures for Pakistan they did well. Waji Makram 3 for 38 in 9 and Wakai Yunus bowled some wonderful deliveries there in that short spell after the rain. 2 for 26 for Amir Sohail 1 for 30 for Akib Javed and 1 for 23 for Mushtaq Ahmed. Ramiz Rajar is gone. No, Brian Lara has put the ball down. Everybody thought he'd taken it, including myself. Dived away, got two hands to it as he hit the deck. So did the ball. Looked to be a very good effort just to start with there. And you see the ball go into the hands and he tries to clutch it to his chest. But he's the only man who can tell at the end of it that it's slipped through the hands, it's slipped off the chest. And gone to ground. Would have been a very, very good catch. And he'll be annoyed because he got so so close to it, did so very well to get down to it like that, and having just lost it at the end, Ramiz Rajar is still at the crease. And now he's off the mark. Should be two runs there. Ron Lara, very good stick fielder. He did do the hard work, got the hands to it. We've seen a number of very good slip catches taken on the inside, in other words, between the slip fielder and the wicket keeper. It's in the air, but over the top of the infield, and that'll be four runs. Very well struck. Too full and too much down the leg side for Ian Bishop. 
getting some advice from somebody. Yes, even though the field has been strengthened on the leg side, there's no danger of anyone cutting that one off. Very nicely timed, up and over the infield. A long way wide of the man at uh, long leg, Anderson Cummins. And that ball's fairly raced towards the boundary. In the air, and he's dropped him. Logie goes away to his left. That one was really heaved away in the air, trying to get it down towards mid-wicket. Didn't go off the meat of the bat. Really, Logie should have caught that. So how again going to mid-on. He was caught here at Belrive Oval, trying to whip the fast bowl through mid-on. This time, Gus Logie made good ground, but both hands to it and put it down. That's the second catch that the West Indians have dropped in a short time, and they're going to prove very costly indeed. here again and this time over the top nicely placed that one at this stage it's not a bad idea to clip the ball over the top of the infield well, Sam Hale's an informed cricketer he's bowled very well here today he fielded brilliantly at Bell Reeve Oval he's chipping over Gaslogie there at mid on he's a very positive cricketer good shot that was Ramiz Raj are getting across the off stump there and again finding the gap. They'll be looking for three, but they won't get them. There's two. Ramiz Raj is very slow in the field and a slow runner as well. He's not quick between the wickets. It's in the air. I don't think it's going to be caught. He may get a hand on it. It's coming down. It'll be a good catch. Oh, he's dropped it. Adams was running away there from that one. It was very, very high. It was, in fact, that high that he eventually got to it quite easily. Oh, Jimmy Adams just showing he can't catch him when he's standing still, which he dropped a sitter in the test match at Brisbane. This time, he paced himself well. He had it, didn't he, really? But he just snatched it at the end and dropped it. Didn't really make a good effort at all as far as catching he was certainly judged the run very well he keeps his eye on the ball but at the end it's a little bit of a snatch and it goes through well, that's a good shot pulled away beautifully and into the fence so that's four You've got to go over the fence here for a six what a good shot though that was short and quick and he was onto it in a flash well the world cup holders are becoming Short price favourites, one would think, at the early stages of the Vince Hedges World Series. And this is one of the reasons why they've got a very good opening attack with the ball, with Wasm Akram and Wacker Yunus. And now they've got a good opening batting pair with Rajo and this young man, who's playing very well indeed. That's a good shot. It's a short boundary too, so... The ball running across the outfield there. Will he drag it back? Yes, just. Well, they end up getting two. Both sides that have got three. Jimmy Adams, I'm going to drop that difficult catch. Substituting for Richie Richardson, who's off injured. Good effort here. Save two runs. Short boundaries, square of the wicket. So Hale finding touch here. He's starting to play strokes. He's pulled that one. It's a bit short and he's got on to it in the flash. It'll run away to the boundary. They won't cut that one off. That's a good shot. The great thing about this wicket uh, is that it's a consistent bounce wicket and if the ball is short, the batsman with confidence can get back and play these uh, horizontal bat shots. Have a look at this one. He's a very handy cricketer. He's got a bit of courage this so Hale, he's hit through the offside. That was just a fraction short. It was a pull shot. He's prepared also to loft it over the onside. He's a hard man to bowl to at the moment. Watch this delivery. In the air, over the top. Will that get to the boundary? Not off the middle again. That's cut off. They've got the third man very square down there. Ten runs of that over. We'll come back to cutting edge in a moment. It's no wicket for 49. 
I think uh, you've got to give the bowler some gauge outside the one of the off stump. I think down the leg side, fair enough, but a batsman played a square slash that shot. It's Tommy he makes contact and it goes for four, so there you go. So Hale moves into the 30s. Rami's Rajas 14. It's a very good stand. Very positive stroke play. of catch it and that's exactly what has been done and Bishop the man at fine leg throws the ball into the ground in disgust I think uh, perhaps feeling that maybe uh, some of the other fielders should have done that off his bowling I think you might be right Philip Simmons is absolutely delighted he's got the Midas touch this guy and Ian Bishop gets around under it does his job very well then just thinks and blinks. And it's one for 63. Sully Malik with eyes gleaming in that picture, but uh, he'll have to wait a moment or two because he's at the non-striker's end. Hit it uh, reasonably well. There's a bit of bounce there for Phil Simmons. Now Bishop. And then... Why couldn't they do it off me? There we go. It's life in a big city. <laughs> Nicely judged, too, by Bishop. He moved smoothly to it. He wasn't actually on the run when the ball arrived there. And it's one for 63. He's a good player, Sally Malik. Didn't do much in the World Cup. And he hasn't done much here today. Anyone can catch that. They've got only themselves to blame if it goes to ground. And there you are. Would you believe it? One for 68 instead of two for 68. Back in a moment. I think that uh, what happened in the end, Jimmy Adams, I reckon, had a bit of a problem with the sun. I think he was looking into the sun was struggling to find it. Then he sensed that Phil Simmons was coming across and thought that uh, maybe he was going to be in a better position. Phil Simmons was really uh, only heading in that direction because he wanted to congratulate Jimmy Adams on taking the catch. And I'm sure there was a sun problem there. Try telling that to Phil Simmons. Well, perhaps it was the sun that got to Phil as well. well Simmons bowls the slower one. That's gone down the ground. Well before all run here. Kirtley Ambrose is the fielder. Four runs from the over, one for 78. To really get these guys back into the game. It's over the top of the infield. And really four. Four runs there to... Ramiz Raja just flicking the ball away off the hip over the infield. Takes him along to 32. And the total to 86. One wicket down. They're a mixed day for Jimmy Adams in the field. Mixed day for the West Indies all round. Nicely stroked and nicely timed. Just the one run though as Phil Simmons comes out from the boundary and Pakistan reach their 100. One for 100. And supporters on the, the hill here at the Adelaide Oval. The score will run away for four. And that's 50 for Rami's Raja. 
has been a little bit out of form at the top of the innings for Pakistan, but 50 today, very handy indeed for them. West Indies not having the greatest day in the field, and this time Desmond Haynes parrying but not catching a very sharp chance at deep point. Well, I go back to what I said earlier, that uh, when you get into a situation like this where catches are going down, comes a time where you don't really believe they're going to stick. It all becomes a horror day. That's precisely what the West Indies are having in the field. Square drive. Desmond Haynes, the man putting it down. There'll be more runs here, very nicely timed off his legs again. And he's rather looking for three. And he's coming back for it, there's confusion here. Should be out now. And he's gone. Salim Malik. Salim Malik, the injured party in one sense. But Ramiz Raja is the man out. When we look at this again, you'll see there's a, a classic comedy of errors. Ramiz Raja quite correct in trying to come back for three. Didn't realise that his partner was incapacitated at the other end and ends up being run out well it is slightly comical until that moment you could see where his foot slipped that's what did it, it looks as though it might be something like the Achilles tendon and uh, he didn't even turn his head he was just uh, consumed by the worry 2 for 117 we'll be back with more details on Salim Malik in a moment The new batsman is Javed Meandad, the Pakistan captain, playing in his 200th one-day international between Ramiz Raja and Salim Malik. Oh. Salim Malik, there you see the pain as he turns and slips. Ramiz Raja hasn't spotted this yet, and he's two-thirds of the way back down before he tries to go for his fourth. That isn't going to make it by some distance. Good throw, and then good work from the bowler also. No hope there for the man who ran a long, long way out there. Armour Sahail has emerged, not as we had half hoped in the commentary box for Amis Raja, who was run out as a result of Salim Malik's injury. So those two are going to have to wait some while before they clear their differences and clear the air. So Hale has gone to the non-striker's end. 60 runs still to win. Oh no, there's trouble again, this is ridiculous. And just to carry on the comedy of errors, Jolly Meandet having asked for the runner to come out, Amasa Hale came out to join the, the two batsmen out there and is running for the injured Salim Malik, nearly achieved the undesirable result of running out his captain. This collision in mid-wicket is a classic. That is an absolute classic, but the throw is just too high. Javin Meandert makes his ground, and all is well. And the 50-second uh, stanza of Keystone Cops will be on in about half an hour. Classic stroke. One of the very best exponents of the square drive. Beautiful shot. Two for 124. Just off the surface there by Phil Simmons at mid-wicket. He had the bad luck to see chances off his own bowling missed earlier in the day, but he's held on to this one very comfortably indeed. A firmly struck shot from Salim Malik, just clipping away off his toes. Just above the ground there, and Phil Simmons hangs on to it. Reward for Kirtley Ambrose, Salim Malik. He's going to walk very slowly off this ground. 
Pakistan are now three for 128. Inzamam Ulhaq, 22 years old, in his 25th one-day international, already with a high score of 117 and a reasonable career average, 34.73, and a very good strike rate. Malik was out off the bowling of Kirtley Ambrose, caught very well at mid-wicket by Phil Simmons, just diving in front of himself there and clutching this ball millimetres almost off the turf. A rare example of good West Indian catching today. Over the top, Inzamam will hack, wasting no time in showing his aggressive intent. Going to come back for three. Desperately trying to see if they can engineer another run out. But safely home. Another collision out there this time. <laughs> It involves uh, Charlotte Meandad and Kirtley Ambrose. Charlotte Meandad running into Kirtley, Kirtley Ambrose. It's shoulder be hitting him around about the middle of his waist. Have a look at this. Single and ooh, that would have been close. Mzamam Al Huck wants another one, but uh, Chavit Meandad's gone too far. Although he's coming back and threatening, he's a stir, isn't he? Quick single and he hits the stumps, and there's a deflection. They'll get another one. Yes, that's the problem. Actually, a little unlucky again. The West Indies. They were backing up pretty well. All in a straight line behind the stumps, but the deflection off the stumps. In the air, could this be out? It won't quite get there. Yes, it will. It oh, he dropped it just for a second. It looked as if it was going to pop out. But in he came, and it was uh, Simmons who did the catching there. Came running in. I didn't think it was going to quite get to him at one stage, but he's quick, and she's happy. Yes, this one's covered good ground there. It went a long way up in the air and he made good ground to it. As I said, Tony, it bubbled for a few moments, but finally settled. Pakistan lose Javed Mianda, their, their captain. It's now 4 for 148. Gassif Bushtabar is the new batsman. He's the young man who smashed that six to win the game for, not to win the game, to tie the game for Pakistan when everyone thought that uh, that was almost impossible. And uh, just having a look at the dismissal again, Javid Meandad going for the big sweep there and getting a top edge. Whoops, and pop back in. Came a long way for that one. This is another angle on it. You can see the ball went very, very high. And in he came, Phil Simmons. And it did bobble around a little bit, but at the end of the day, safe and sound. Fielded and oh, he's got him. Yes, he's run him out. That's magnificent fielding. Absolutely magnificent. Out second ball he faced for a duck. He didn't believe the bowler was going to get that. Anderson Cummins jumped in the air. Boy, did he love it. Grabbed it with one hand. Look at those smiles. Threw at the stumps and the batsman wasn't able to get back. Good cricket. Yes, he had to make good ground to his right there. Wow. That was good work by Anderson Cummins. Asif Mushtaba, after such an excellent innings, oh, he's happy. <laughs> Asif Mushtaba. Pakistan lose their fifth wicket for 148. Wazi Makram, a magnificent stroke player, also a great fast bowler. He's out there now. Akram, the other one is Ian Healy. This is uh, that run out again. Have a look at the throw at the stumps and uh, not before time the West Indies get themselves a little break. And this is the good part. Have a look at him. I tell you what, I'd love to see him on the disco floor.
We got it now, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Hold in. Beautiful delivery right in the block hole. Just a little bit quicker. In through that uh, defence it went. And Wazim Akram is on his way. Now, are the Pakistanis going to panic? Carl Hooper is not usually an easy bowler to use your feet and get to. He's very strong. As you can see, they are a quicker deliverer sneaking around the Wazim Akram's bat. Not easy to chip to Carl Hooper. Wazim Akram goes. Pakistan lose their sixth wicket. 151 on the board for the six wickets down. Rashid Latif is the new batsman. Made a big contribution with Asif Mushtaba the other day. Oh, I need to hit the stumps there. It's the direct hits that get the run outs. Inzaman now Huck on strike. That's a chance of run out. He's got to be gone. He'll beat him. Yes, he's gone. It's all happening here, and it's panic from Pakistan's point of view. A good piece of fielding. They're backing up too far. Desmond Hunt is in. And that's a vital wicket. The old man of the West Indies side, isn't he delighted about that? It's a very good stop. The ball was hit, and in fact, I think Rashid Latif made the mistake of going on the hit. He thought it was a really good hit, and it deserved a run. But Desmond got across and got the left hand on it. Terrific effort there. Now he could have uh, picked it up and just about run home and taken the bales off, but he decides to uh, knock them down. And so uh, there is a bit of panic in the Pakistan camp. Lose their seventh wicket with 153 on the board. Wacky Yunus, the new batsman to the crease. So the pressure right on Pakistan. Runs on the board now for the West Indies. Wacky Yunus gets a full toss. Bad ball. But it may go all the way. Kirtley Ambrose is coming around with the big ones. Cuts it off. And pick up three. That was a poor delivery. Full and down leg side. The attempted Yorker from Anderson Cummins. He's been bowling a lot of Yorkers. Calling him into the circle. I think they've really got to bring him in um, a bit further. And just try and save that single. Close, Desi's got it. Under, oh, the throw. He over top of the wicketkeeper. An overthrow. Or maybe out. No! A chance of a runner that went over the wicketkeeper's head. The relay throw caught Inzman well out of his ground. Keith Arthurton, what a magnificent throw. Desmond Haynes, the problem for Desi was that he was caught on the wrong hand. He had to do the underarm flip left-handed. Desi's probably in there telling him, well, I did that on purpose because I wanted to get rid of Inzamarm. The left-handed throw went straight to over the keeper's head. Caught on the wrong hand there. But now Keith Arthurton, what a magnificent throw this one is. About a 40 metre throw and it was spot on. Perfect. Would have hit him as well, I think, but Carl Hooper made certain of it. And Inzamam is on his way. Eight for 162. Mustak Ahmed coming to the crease. Four run outs now for Pakistan. Yes, losing Inzamam uh, was bad news for them. Scott in. Carl Hooper coming out of the crowds. Another Yorker. Waka Yunus bowled as clean as a whistle and the West Indies are on top. This is an amazing turnabout. Uh, the West Indies, and the one thing you must say about the West Indies, uh, well, a couple of things. Their fielding has improved markedly. It was shocking early on, but their fielding has improved. And they've kept their head. And Carl Hooper has now yorked two batsmen. And they've got the number 11 in uh, Akib Javid, who is not all that good with the bat. It's 9 for 162. 42 over a match due to the 86 minutes lost early on this, today. 6,500 people on the edge of their seats. Oh. It's in the air. He's out. It's no ball called by both umpires. Well, well, it's all happening. It was over the batsman's head. Bishop says, what's going on? The umpire, the ball was in, the umpire of the square both threw out their arms for no ball. See the tension on the batsman's face, sun breaking through once again. It's well played. 
Just the single. Well, certainly is a tense situation. The crowd's been very noisy. They've seen some good stroke play early on. It's a good shot. It's a man deep mid wicket, just the single. It's nine for 170. Maybe he's leaving it to the last ball to hit a six. He struck that well down to one arm. It's only a single. Jimmy Adams gathers cleanly a good throw back. It's an accurate job of the man who needs a boundary here. Six to tie it. Couldn't happen again. Short boundaries, though. Square leg. He goes down to one arm. They should go for two here. They've got to go for two. Kirtley Ambrose picks up beautifully. The throw's coming in safely home. That's Logie now just calling Ambrose up for a few metres. It's well fielded, but just come in uh, a metre or two just to make sure that they can't get to the next time. Oh, was that a stumping? Is it running out for sure? It's gone, it's all over. <laughs> West Indies win, and that's a great win here at the Adelaide Abel. They caught themselves off the mat. Gus Logie, acting captain, a superb job. A wonderful finish and five run outs. Yes, well, that equals Australia. I feel much better now. Australia in the World Cup final in 1975. Five runouts. At least we've got uh, another team on the same mark. And it was uh, Akib Javid who was run out. Junior Murray coming around to make the pick up there after Hooper had jammed yet another Yorker in at the batsman. And uh, he wasn't able to get it away. Just came a few metres in front of the wicket. And from there, Junior Murray picked up. He had the glove off pretty quickly. Akib uh, starting to go, and then he sent back. In fact, it was Mushtaq who was run out. And so it's all over for Pakistan. And an incredible comeback victory there for the West Indies. Hooper picking up uh, three wickets there. And so it really was a good performance from the West Indies. And I've got $5,000 allocated out of that Benson and Hedges kitty and $3,000 to Richie Richardson, you and your team. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Didn't look as if you had enough runs there for a while. Well, uh, with cricket, you never know. And as the, the, la the last two games have shown that um, it's never quite over, over until you've heard the fat lady. You must have enjoyed the way you, you played because that was a good knock. And uh, you also had some good support from Carl Hooper. And oh, yeah. also, also Ian Bishop played well too. Yeah, Ian um, played well when he came there. Yeah, I, um, I was feeling really good. I woke up this morning and I felt good apart from my back. And I, I believe I would get some runs. And I was, I was a bit disappointed when the rain came and set us back a little bit. Um, but it was a good match all around. Um, the guys um, were a bit shaky early on, but then we came back and played very well. I'm afraid I've only got $1,500 for you. Um, first of all, you seem to have been getting into a bit of a bad habit of colliding with people out there, with your own batsman, and then with Kirtley Ambrose, of all people. Well, I mean, everybody's seen what's happened, you know. I think we shouldn't... I want to give a lesson to the... our especially youngster, how to run the... <laughs> than, than, than in between the wicket. Because five run outs and you were, I mean one stage you was easily we were winning the game because four run in over and there was seven or eight wickets in hand and in the end but it's cricket. What about the uh, did the did that shower that came over? Did that uh, did that sort of get you to send a message out there? Did that get you to panic a little bit or was it just a straightforward question of inexperience? No, I don't think because there was everything was all right under control and I didn't send any message. We were just playing according to the situation, four, five, four run in over. I think it wasn't big, big runs to us. Well, everyone in Pakistan was watching. Everyone in the West Indies were watching. You've had two tremendous days of one-day cricket now, so um, I, su I suspect all the spectators should be very happy. Yes, uh, it's happened in the game. Uh, same thing happened in the last game. I mean, we were nowhere to win the game, and we at least we got the one point. And uh, today, you know, we, this game was in our hand. And it slipped. Well, bad luck today, but uh, good luck in the next ones. Well played so far. And congratulations on your 200th match as well. He's played.